We're talking about angle between two lines because this flows directly out of the trig expansions which we reviewed yesterday, okay? I want you to remember, if you've got a situation like this, the angle between two lines, unless they specifically say, hey, we want this, usually refers to the acute angle between the two lines, okay? Obviously, you could pick the other one, the obtuse angle in this case, but the relationship between them is they're just supplementary. So, whichever one you find, you just look at the question in the wording, what it says, and you're going to use the same formula one way or the other. Okay. Now, if we want to find the angle between the two lines, if you remember back to when we first proved this, it's based on the angle between each of those lines and the x-axis. So you might want to fit that onto your diagram. Okay, good morning. So you may recall that we have a nice, very easy relationship to find out any of these independent angles. Okay? So for example, see this alpha over here, right? There's a formula that we can use, in fact it's just straight out of tri right angle triangle trig to find out what alpha is when we know the gradient of that line. What's the way we do that? How do we find that? What would negative 4, the gradient of this line, have to do with this angle over here? Does anyone remember? It's a two unit formula. Think back. You've got three ratios. I want you to think. Which one will relate? Remember this is a gradient, right? Gradients just rise over run. If I, if I put in like a, a rise and a run, it's going to be tan, isn't it? Because you, you're not interested in the hypotenuse. Sine and cos are both connected to the hypotenuse, which is this one. But your rise and your run are going to be an opposite and an adjacent, depending on which way you look at it. Okay? So in this case, m, that's the gradient there, would be equal to tan, and the angle I've given for that one is, is alpha. Okay, so we would say, generally speaking, m equals tan theta. I'm not using that particular formula in this case because where we're more interested, our theta today, is this angle, the one between the two lines. Okay, now, if that's for this steep negative line, I can do the same thing for the other line. So a half is the other gradient I'm interested in, and it's equal to tan beta. Very good. Now, these are all the pieces that I need. Because the angle between the two lines is based on these two angles, right? It's just the difference between them, okay? So tan of theta, that angle, do you remember this? We're only thinking about the acute one. So therefore, I put some absolute value signs here. Why do I put absolute value signs? It, it can't be negative, but what, what effect does that have? Why does that give me the acute angle? Think about it. Think. Yeah, yeah, do you remember, you remember this guy, right? Okay. The angle you're going to get is going to be either acute or obtuse, right? It's either acute or obtuse. So it's going to be up here in quadrant one or two, yes? But if you're in quadrant two, tan is negative. If I want to avoid that, I just say, well, let's make tan positive and you will not get this angle, you'll get the acute one. Does that make sense? Okay. So theta, we said, was the difference between those two angles. So it's alpha minus beta. But we have a trig expansion for this, right? Do you remember we reviewed it yesterday? All six were on the board. Um, I planned out this board poorly, so let's just move over here. Um, think about what fraction you're going to get out of this. Do you remember what big, enormous fraction you're going to get? Tan, tan alpha minus, the minus stays along on the numerator. And then you're going to get the opposite sign on the bottom, right? 1 plus. Okay. Now, the lovely thing about this is that in this context, I know exactly what tan alpha and tan beta are. I mean, if I were to try and go to alpha and beta and do tan inverse or something like that, I'd get weird, awkward angles. But I don't need to because this formula doesn't require alpha and beta. It requires tan alpha and tan beta. Right? So I can replace all of those just with the gradients. That what, that's what they're equal to. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this two times. I'm going to write it generally. I'm going to write it with um, m1, m2 as gradients. And then we're going to work at this because I'm actually interested in doing this angle in radians. So here's the general version. Okay? You've got your first gradient and your second gradient, like so. And then you've got your first gradient and your second gradient again. Okay. Now, quick question. Is this one of those formulas where it matters which one is 1 and which one is 2? Because in some formulas it matters, and in others it does not. 
So does it matter in this one? And the answer is, it doesn't matter. Thank God, it's one of those ones where you can just sort of fire and forget. My question is why? Like, look, look up here, like, I, I can see why it doesn't matter which one of these, because multiplication is commutative. But up here, usually subtraction, it makes a difference which one you put first. So why doesn't it matter here? Yeah, I mean, it's the absolute values, isn't it, right? Because if, for example, I had five take away three up here, you'd get two. If I had three take away five, you'd get negative two, but the absolute value sort of fixes you up and you're back to normal, okay? All right, now what I'm gonna ask you to do is can you please put these in, but for this particular question, for this example, and make sure your calculator is in radians mode because you're going to get tan theta equals, so you're gonna have to undo that with the inverse tree. Once you've done that, the answer will be different depending on which mode you get it in. So I'll give you a second to work that out. Once someone gets something, can you give it to me in um, maybe, give me two decimal places, we'll do. Two decimal places, has anyone got it already? Oh, hold on. Yeah, cool. What do we get? Two decimal places? 1.16. Do I have some agreement? Yes? No? Maybe so? 0.98. They're, they're kind of different. Did we put this into our... This is, this is just... I put M1 and M2 in there? Did I put it in correctly? That's not a rhetorical question. Did I put it in correctly? Is the substitution okay? Are you happy with it? Yes? No? Did someone get... A, did we get an alternative to 1.16? What was the difference? I'm curious now. The witch? Oh, yeah, that that guy? That's kind of. I'm. Cu oh, you just you've just got that number. Is that right? Yeah. So you haven't. Okay. So once we once we pass, because we're interested in angle. Yeah. This is by the way. This is one of the tricky things with um with working in radians that the angles and the numbers you get from the angles often look remarkably similar. Whereas if you get something like 47 degrees, you know that's something else. Okay. What do I got? Michael, did you get something? What's going on, Michael? 1.35, do I have agreement on that? Yes, 1.35, is that better? <laughs> Mrs. Lee doesn't trust you. <laughs> That's a bad sign, you 12. Team down. Um, let's quickly check, right? Now, one of the ways that I know we're in the right ballpark is because I did my best to um, draw a reasonably to scale diagram so I would have a rough sense. Now, 1.35, you, you are not yet that accustomed to dealing with radians, but you're going to get more used to it. If it's an acute angle, what is the range in radians of this angle? Like, what's the biggest it could possibly be? Pi on 2, which you start, you need to start getting used to actually seeing on your calculator, which will give it to you in decimal. So that's about 1.57, I believe it is, because you know, 3.14, you divide by 2. Okay, so is this less than that 1.57? Yeah. yeah, and it's pretty close to a right angle, which is sort of what my diagram indicates I ought to expect. Is that okay? Got a thumbs up? 